water pump. Gonna give that a clean up again. One last clean up now in here. And then um, we're taking it outside, dry it off, um, put a bit of paint and a lacquer, and that'll be it for the pump, see if it works. Could do with pressure testing it really to see if any of the, the seals are gone. It might be that it has to wait till it's on the car. Okay, alright, so that's had one last acid dip and then neat acid straight over it using the scrubbing brush just to finish off the surface. That's keyed it in nicely for the primer. We'll just get a dull zinc primer on it and then we'll give it a petrol proof lacquer. I think that's the water pump refurb. The best I can do. Those bolts are cooking away nicely in there. We'll leave them overnight. See how we get on with those in the morning. Let's go and get that uh, let's go and get this cleaned up. Just remind you that I had the goggles on throughout the course of the acid and caustic soda cleaning. Gotta keep these on if you get that or that just one splash in your eyes and you're in big big trouble I'm telling you now it's not happened to me wouldn't even try and take a risk you've got to have them on and then make sure you wash everything back down because you can't mess with that stuff so a little note there okay also cleans your drains while you're at it never seen the sinks are clean put some paint down <laughs> See this bad boy comes up. Let's rebuild our cast iron 71 water pump. Back from the dead. Right, we've got some red oxide on now to seal the deal. And then we'll be finishing off with a, um, a high temp engine silver try and get it as close to this finish which is this is a, a new pump okay so we're often trying to get that effect and there's the uh, rare fuel pump there has had some treatment as well keep on going a little update on the engine there she's had another coat of, of engine black now when she was at the shop she picked up some knocks and bangs and uh, anyway it, it only had the one coat so I've done another coat we're on the, the swiveller which is a nice piece of kit that's from Machine Mart and uh, just accumulating all the parts really we're starting to stockpile the bits in here I've got myself some uh, gaskets sealer ready to start putting everything together starting to build up these components after they've all been Clean, painted, treated, wheels there, as you saw they rebuild on the distributor, the Motorcraft 1, looking nice as it was from the factory, it's oiled, greased and conditioned up, new points in there, new condenser in it, that's done, that's a nice piece, original, some of the parts wrapped in there waiting to go on, so we're just stockpiling the engine components. These need to be powder coated. These are the front brake discs. There's a nice new set of engine mount rubbers. Have a front um, cam belt guard off being powder coated at the moment. So we're just keeping on going with as much stuff as we can. Let's put that Motocraft oil filter away. Got a Motocraft fan belt on the way as well. You can see these other engine parts, the distributor clamp. The oil feed from the side of the block, they've been galvanised. Let's put these in there for safekeeping. Let's just see how this red oxide's going off now. It's drying under the infrared. And we're going to pop on some... We've got this petrol resistant lacquer which seems to be pretty good stuff and have some uh, engine enamel. Now I'm just going to experiment with different finishes before I finally apply it to this pump. See what looks good on a trial piece of metal first. Okay, so let's get that red oxide cured and then we'll get the silver and the lacquer on. Alright, putting down the, the, uh, the engine enamel paint to finish off over the red oxide and I think and now we're finishing off with this engine enamel which is close to an original 
well, it's close to the replacement water pump colours that you get. Unfortunately, I have no colour pictures of Ford's original water pump. Can't see it being finished in just uh, cast iron, so they must have had some coating on there. It could have been black, possibly. Don't know. So I could get pulled on this. Um, anyway, it looks smart, so there we go. I'll put another coat on it, then we'll finish that with the light. Happy to know we've got Planet Rock back on. Okay, so we're, we're coated. We're rocking, ready to go. There's your Ford water pump. We're sort of uplifted again. Planet Rock really gets the juices flowing, it gets the paint out of the can and onto the surface. So uh, we're happy, we're happy. Let's just hope the thing's not um, leaking. Seems all right, so I've got to say, so there you go. We're off, we're off, we're off. That's it for this evening's little uh, session. I'm waiting for a few parts now. I'm waiting for... Uh, what I'm waiting for for this... Um, well, there's this possibility of not using the head I was going to use, of getting a, another head done with a Kent cam in it, a 275. And also uh, doing a few other minor alterations just to increase the power output, but keeping the engine looking original with no major mods so thinking of putting a cam on um, what's called a, a fast road I'm also going to fit a an aluminium pulley on the front there a smaller pulley drive it's a slight mod you can do and um, waiting for some bits for that there's a rocker cover waiting to be picked up sump bolts are getting as you saw just earlier on the sump bolts are getting um, stripped and cleaned up as uh, you saw that box of bits which we're building up so it's all little little bits and pieces still as you can see the car's not gone that's the 20th of May and it's still here because I've just not picked the right moment to collect it and I'm trying to get the it, find a way of getting it off those pallets onto the back of the um, low loader so I've been discussing it this week with the guy who runs the low loader and we'll come up with a few ideas to get it on I've just got to put a couple of spots of braze in the front wing just to seal around the indicators and there's one little bit of metal to make for the, the wing where it makes the front balance but other than that there's nothing to do to it so it, it can just go so in the meantime I say full engine build and then there's the clip the paint's finally cured on the clip so it's durable enough to start putting together so I'll be doing that as well you'll be watching that come together that axle's got to be sent off to Fostech the Swampy's axle's been stolen by my green car, which means that the green car's axle's been shot blasted. Well, it was some time ago, it's come back the rust, but we'll cue rust this and then it's going to go back to Fostec and it's going to get a 345 pinion, crown wheel and pinion in it. Um, it's going to come back built up with a 345, which gives me slightly lower revs at 70 mile an hour, so I'm going to be cruising in this car. So. Um, that's why I want to increase the torque on the engine to offset the the ratio on the axle that I changed. Just give me an extra bit of torque and power to so I can sit at 70 mile an hour comfortable with a low revs but plenty of torque. So that's the plan. That is the plan to set the car up as a, a continental cruiser. So there we go. Over and out for tonight. It's 20 for May. Over and out for tonight. I'm not hanging around. I'm going. Oh, by the way, we redid the sump. I've been giving it some uh, 600 coats uh, between layers and I've redone the sump. I didn't quite like that very matte finish. So just for those on YouTube who were saying um, it was a bit too matte, yeah, I agreed and I uh, stripped it down and redid it. So it's just the... Uh, I've just been flattening the coats then painting it back up. Got a bit obsessed with it, really, but uh, looking nice. So that's the sump redone for the engine. The sump redone. Well done. What we got might be on video now. What we got? An awkward thing. You're in a time warp, Mike. It's 1980. Take yourself back. These are the scrapyards how they used to be. 1980? God. I'm not getting married. Right. It's never going to happen. You've done it. You're on a winner then. The bitch can go and screw herself. You're on a winner. Hey, this is on record. I hope we're careful what you say. No, no, I know she's a bitch. These are the... This is the... Uh, what we got here, it's the... 
71 GT. Yeah. In what? Copper, bro no, uh, Tony Brown. Yeah. And it's got an absolute cracker of a fiberglass eater box. No, it's gone at the top, mate. Look. Not they're all gone, they're rubbish, them. Get a plastic one, they're a lot better. That's the engine. If anyone wants to buy it, that's a, only done 7,000 miles, apparently. I don't know where that, we'll need to get some evidence of that. It could be because it's got the stickers on it. Where's the stickers, Mike? Hey, to see if there's a brand a, new inside of the an extra label underneath. This is it. Sixteen hundred. It should say it on HC. There it is. HC is high compression, I'm presuming. Yep. But what? So uh, they're all HC, aren't they? No, some were different. Uh, but the GT heads apparently flow better earth flow yeah. than uh, than the other ones. Sixteen hundred flow better than the two liters. Ones. Scuttle's not bad, Mike. You know, I you quite like it. Your normal. That one's yeah. chopping out, really. Yeah, it does. It needs a, needs a bulkhead section taken away. Mm. There's your GT interior. Are you going to get the wheel, Pete? Hang on. I've got a Phillips screwdriver and a spanner set, so we can just go and ask if we can take it out now. GT seat. Is it any any uh, advantage me putting the GT seats in the ripped in mine? Just for safety, so you don't get whiplash if you crash. No, not really. Because I was concerned about them seats without headrests. No, you need the period access. I know don't you? that's the thing, but if you're gonna get, them, get the period, you think someone shunts you, you know, your your neck snapped, doesn't it? Yeah. What's under that uh, polar thing, Pete? Nothing, just some sandpaper. I don't think his pedigree is quite there, is it? I mean, these things, yeah. these things are okay to get. That's quite a good order, that one. Yeah, it's not Take bad. Take that one. Yeah. Ask him if he'll sell that. Floor's gone. Boot floor's gone, as usual. Is that one jammed up in the side? I think it's already out. It's here, mate. Yeah. Look. I think it's already out, mate. Right? Look, they got um, they are. On that one. Mm, that's a rare one. Ask him if he'll sell these bits. So just Hold that lid down for us so I can get a, a shot. Here's Mike with his latest project. Yeah. You ready for it, Mike? You got some filler? Your welder ready? No know. GT badge on this one. It doesn't look like it's had one stuck on it. I've mended them worse than this in the past. There you have. Is it Tony Brown? Is it the Tony Brown? Yeah, it Mm. It's got the wrong interior. The wrong interior. No, I think it's, that's that's right. That. No, not for seventy one. Surely it would have had the. I thought it should have the centre light as well. I, I would have thought it would have had suitcase handles. And the centre light. Yeah, the shell's not not what it seems. No, I don't know. I think it's just they're, they're changing over. I mean, the reds. You know, it could have. Yeah, it's people been. He's been doctoring it, hasn't he? I don't think so. I think that you know, still some were made like this. No, not that a very, know. very late one. It could be just before they went on to L, this. Could be, but, but the facelifts weren't done till, till late. It's a, it's, a, it's a strange one. The corner sections are good. It goes quite nice. Is there anything that's salvageable on it? Um, Apart from the engine. Scuttle. Yeah, the scuttle right. needs to be That's removed. That's my only thought. They're rare too. What bonnet bumper, rubbers? Bumper bonnet. Bumper bonnet. Bumper bonnet stops. Doing good order too. That clear lens is gone. Headlamps have gone. Tatty. Hmm. You can, you, you can, they do come up occasionally. The halogen light glasses are worth something because they're, you know, with a stamped halogen on the front. Yeah.